Sega revealed Sonic Superstars at Summer Game Fest 2023, and on paper, it's looking fantastic. It's a modern take on the classic Sonic formula, and I'm sure it'll be as well received as Mania was. This is great for fans of classic Sonic, but for me and a lot of fans personally, this is the last thing we wanted to see from Sega. I would have loved for Sonic Superstars to be a modern 2D Sonic game, something in the same vein as Sonic Advance and Sonic Rush. And I think this would have happened if a little game named Sonic Generations hadn't changed this series forever. I despise Sonic Generations. It's a good game in its own right and has some of the best boost levels the series has ever seen, but I hate the effect it's had on the Sonic series as a whole. Prior to 2011, Sonic, no matter how he looked, was just Sonic. This was the same as this, and this was the same as this. And it wasn't until Generations that this distinction was made, separating Sonic into classic and modern. Had Sega not split Sonic into multiple different characters, I'm confident that Superstars would be a 2D modern Sonic game. And if you want proof of this, well, let's go back and examine the series before the split happened in 2011. After the Dreamcast got absolutely obliterated by the release of the PS2, Sega opted out of the console business and became a third party publisher. This saw the almost immediate release of SA2 to the GameCube and the release of Sonic Advance for the GBA. Sonic Advance was groundbreaking in the sense that it was a continuation of the classic Sonic trilogy, but with the flair and style brought on by Adventure Era Sonic. They used Sonic's adventure design at the time, and there was no, what well, we're so used to today, classic Sonic branding on its packaging. At this time, Sonic was in a clear state of evolution and didn't cling onto the past. He was rapidly changing throughout each iteration, having wildly different character models between games, and Sega wasn't afraid to make changes to his look by giving him new shoes or visible power-ups. Still though, Sega respected the past with releases like Sonic Mega Collection on the GameCube. This was a compilation of the original Sonic trilogy, and Classic Sonic was nowhere to be seen on the cover. This lack of Classic Sonic branding continued with the release of Sonic Gems Collection, and 2005 saw the release of Sonic Rush, a 2D Sonic game which doubled down on the adventure era styling, with even funky music and an introduction of a new playable character. And there wasn't any sign of Sonic playing it safe until, unfortunately, five years later. 2010 saw the release of Sonic 4 Episode 1, and let's just say it didn't deliver. This was supposed to be the long-awaited continuation of 2D Sonic, but it fell flat in almost every regard. I think Sonic 4 was what really brought on the hate for modern Sonic in a classic setting, but the design wasn't to blame as to why the game was so dog shit. One of the main reasons why everyone hated Sonic 4 was because Sonic lacked the momentum he used to have in Sonic 1 through 3. He was for some reason given the homing attack, which was a staple in 3D Sonic games, but in my, and a lot of other people's opinions, had no place in a slower paced 2D Sonic. I honestly don't know why Sonic 4 released in the state that it did, considering prior to this, Dimps had an almost perfect track record with the Advanced Trilogy, Sonic Rush 1 and 2, and Sonic Colors DS. They even somewhat perfectly recreated Sonic's momentum from the classics in Sonic Advance, so everyone was surprised that 4 didn't feel the same. And then in 2011 came Sonic Generations, which I think, put the nail in the coffin to creativity in the Sonic series. Since 2011, Sega's been shoehorning classic Sonic into everything. Generation's success made Sega learn the wrong lessons, making them comfortable insistently using old level motifs, but has somehow even gotten worse than that, because in Sonic Frontiers, Sega literally stripped old acts out of old games, placing them into cyberspace with a new coat of paint as if they were new. They don't realize that Generations was loved because making an anniversary title was actually a niche idea for the series at the time. They've gotten comfortable playing into our nostalgia, and this unwillingness to evolve all add to the general sense of apathy I feel toward the franchise right now. And I just want to know if anyone else feels the same way. Make sure to like and subscribe and tell me what you think down below.